focus entitled End-to-End -end Joint Semantic Segmentation of Actors and Actions in Video. Hi, everyone. I'm Jin Weiji from Stanford Vision and Learning Lab. Today, I'll present our work titled End-to-End -end Joint Semantic Segmentation of Actors and Actions in Video. In the field of vision understanding, re research is moving towards the understanding of higher levels of detail. Early work in this domain tackled the problem of action classification. In this setting, the algorithms are given a short video clip, and the goal is to output a single action label for the whole video clip. Here we show an example where the model should uh, output the label boxing. However, such video level output is still quite coarse, as it does not provide any special information about the actions. A more detailed algorithm sh could produce not only what action is occurring in the video, but also where it is happening. We call this setting action spatial localization, where the algorithm produces labels attached to bounding boxes uh, around each actor. In this example, there are several action instances in boxing scene. And to have a more comprehensive understanding, we should know where each actor is and what each of them is doing individually. Here we have one person watching and the other two boxing. However, for some applications, understanding at the bounding box level is still too coarse. For instance, if we want to build automated scoring in boxing, uh, we may require analysis of where punches are making contact on the other boxer. This means we would need instance-level seg uh, semantic segmentation of the actors and their actions in scene. This type of applications motivate us to work on the task of actor-action semantic segmentation. More formally, actor-action semantic segmentation is a video understanding task where the input is a video clip, and the goal is to predict the actor labels and the action class labels for each actor in every pixel, uh, in, at the pixel level in every frame. Specifically, actor categories may include humans, animals, and inanimate objects, and we focus on atomic actions like running and eating. The prior work on the actor action semantic segmentation task can be classified into two categories. In the first group, our approach is based on probabilistic graphical models. These graphical model methods treat every pixel in the video as a node in a graph and develop a probabilistic prediction of actor and action labels on each node. There are several pros of this matter. The, uh, they've, do, they've been doing uh, joint modeling of actor and action, and they have modeled temporal interactions of different video parts. Still, it has some limitations. Uh, unfortunately, the actor and action tasks are very tightly coupled in a single joint actor action product space. This makes transferring to new action categories difficult. A second category. Uh, utilizes a two-stage refinement strategy. It first performs action spatial localization in the video, and then a segmentation step is applied within the bounding boxes. There are several pros of them. First, they use the uh, optical flow, and second, they achieved the state-of-the-art performance. Third, they did uh, instance segmentation beyond just semantic segmentation. Still, there are some limitations as well. First, they did single frame inference. And second, the disconnected multi-stage processing is suboptimal. We embrace these limitations of the prior work uh, as the key design goals for our approach. First, instead of doing inference in a very tightly coupled joint space of actors and actions, we would like to balance joint uh, multitask training while decoupling the actor action space. Multitask here is important because our task can be solved by three subtasks, instance segmentation, action recognition, uh, and actor classification. With the joint multitask training, each subtask can benefit from the others. 
but also we want to uh, balance such joint training with decoupling uh, these tasks to enable easier transfer to uh, new actor and action ca uh, categories. Second, instead of performing single frame inference, we want the model to leverage temporal context. For instance, if you only look at the first frame of this dog, you won't know if it's walking or not. Only if, you, uh, only if the neighboring frames are seen will one know that this dog is walking. Third, instead of a disconnected multi-stage processing, we would like to have an end-to-end model um, that uh, jointly solves all subtasks. We predict the, uh, all subtasks. This is important because it can enable more optical model and feature learning. Let's now see how we design our model around these three goals. First, note that our input is a video clip, and our model should produce a segmentation for each actor and action in the clip. We compose this final output by solving several subtasks. We predict the localization bounding boxes, uh, actor class, actor segmentation mask, and also the actions class label. We then merge these four outputs to compose the final actor action semantic segmentation. To meet our first goal, we partially decouple the model, the network architecture, into an actor and an action branch that can communicate with each other. This maintains the ability to train the model jointly in a multitask fashion so that each subtask can benefit from the others. And we will show this partial decoupling also enables stronger transfer to new actor categories. Let's now see the details of the actor branch. We base the actor branch on mask RCNN. We first extract the pyramid feature maps from the RGB video clip. And uh, our eye align crops and resizes the feature maps uh, according to object proposal. The aligned feature maps are fed into the output layers that correspond to bounding box regression, actor classification, and actor segmentation. At this point, we are able to localize segments and classify each actor. However, we still need to recognize the action they are performing. Our key design goal for the action recognition task is to leverage temporal context. We achieve this in two ways. First, we use the optical flow as a local motion queue. Second, we aggregate the temporal information across multiple frames. The flow is fed into a feature extractor to generate pyramid feature maps. And then a temporal 3D convolutional operation uh, will be performed on the pyramid feature maps from the both streams. The aligned fused uh, feature maps are used to predict action labels for each mask. With this architecture design, we actually meet our th third goal. We have an end-to-end -end differentiable architecture where the parameters can be jointly trained and some tasks can benefit from each other. Now we have the details of our model. We conduct several experiments to validate our approach. In terms of data set, we use the actor action data set introduced by Xu et al. The data set provides 3,782 videos from YouTube and 42 actor action cross labels. Here we show some of the segmentation uh, annotations that the data set provides. The segmentation masks are provided for three to five frames in each video. We now evaluate the Im impact of our design goals. Recall that we wanted an end-to-end -end, uh, architecture, a joint learning of actor and action, and leverage the temporal context. To examine their impact, we designed baselines that isolate the contribution of each component at a time. In particular, we analyze the impact of each goal for our main task of actor-action semantic segmentation. We measure the performance in terms of mean intersection of a union. First, we implement a strong two-stage baseline that is not end-to-end. -end. Second, uh, we implement a, a, another baseline that trains the actor and action components separately. 
Third, a baseline without any temporal layers. We found that our full model outperforms all these baselines, indicating that all of our design goals play important roles in the final performance. Next, we'll compare our model to the state-of-the-art algorithms, first on the task of actor-action semantic segmentation. In the task of actor-action semantic segmentation, where the algorithms output actor labels, action labels, and segmentation masks given a short video clip. We compare our model against a representative probabilistic graphical model and a two-stage refinement method. We have reached the state of the art on actor action semantic segmentation. Let's have a look on the qualitative results. Here's an example of dog crawling. A dog crawling, actually. We compare our uh, output against the ground truth and the previous state of the art. We can see that the prediction of our model has better com uh, temporal consistency in both actor labels and action labels. Here's another example. Our model also generates sharper masks than prior work. And this is an example of multiple actors performing different actions. As we can see from the results, our model is also better at prediction in a more complicated scene. Now we compare on another task of action spatial localization. As a reminder, in actor action spatial localization, the input is a video clip, and the output is a bounding boxes, actor labels, uh, action labels of each instance in each frame, and evaluate uh, on the metric of mean average precision, or MAP. And again, our model generates better localization results than prior work. Here are some examples of our um, localization outputs. The last experiment is on our model's capability of decoupling actor and action understanding. As one of our design goals, our model not only benefits from the joint learning of actor and action, but is also able to decouple the knowledge of actor and action. Here we use a zero-shot learning experiment to demonstrate the decoupling ability. In the training phase, we train with only one class of actor missing. For example, the dog is missing here. So the model will learn cat running, but have never seen a dog running. In the test phase, we only test the cross labels of dog with all the other all the actions, like dog running and dog eating. With this setup, we'll know that if our model has learned actions, like running, as an actor agnostic concept. We evaluated zero-shot learning performance on the actor action spatial localization task. Regarding the average precision, we reached the state of the art again. We observed that uh, some stronger zero-shot generalization performance uh, on both easier transfer cases, such as cat rolling to dog rolling, as well as harder cases from cat rolling to car rolling. In summary, what we have learned from this research is not only a powerful model that can do the uh, actor-action act semantic segmentation, but also other several guiding principles that could benefit research in this field. In the model design, we should balance the joint learning and decoupling of actor action knowledge. Besides, temporal context is critical to consider in the model. Moreover, end-to-end -end architecture is preferred so that different subtasks uh, can benefit from each other via parameter optimization. We thank our sponsors. We will be at the uh, poster number 87 right after this oral session to discuss in more detail. Thank you all. OK, thanks. We have time for one question. Is there any question? So I see no questions, or maybe I asked one question too. Sure. You use the optical flow, um, and you feed it into a larger network to fuse it with the outer stream. Right. What exactly led you to this choice? So why do you use the optical flow in that way? Uh, you mean the architecture used? Yeah. Yeah. It was a ResNet uh, uh, 
uh, yeah, it's a ResNet. I, I used the 101, I think. Uh, and uh, it was uh, pre-trained on the uh, it was pre-trained on the ImageNet, and uh, so that's the uh, ways to initialize with, and we fine-tune the whole model joint state end to end. And so, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we are out thank of time. You. So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.